Okay. Good evening, good evening, good evening. It's nine o'clock. Well, it's just after, actually. About 41 seconds after now. Uh, and it is, ooh, the 23rd of July, 2013. Today, we have got a very special show. Oh, yes. And it's 99.9% .9 dedicated to Mrs. Linda McAvan who's the Labour MEP for Yorkshire and the Humber. And all that will happen after the titles, because this, my dear viewers, this is Vaporseen. Vaporseen is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e liquid Yes, welcome to Vapor Scene on this extremely hot and humid Tuesday night. I did think the rain we had in Barnsley earlier today was going to kind of clear it out a little bit, uh, but no. It's pretty sticky, pretty humid, and my PC just didn't like it when I came back into my office to uh, start about 10 to 9. So I uh, had to do a quick reboot, but I'm here. So if I disappear again, I will come back. Just keep watching. Um, but hopefully my PC will hold itself together. Anyway, yes, today is a very special show, really, because um, this afternoon I went to visit Linda McAvan, and it's McAvan, not McAvan, and not McAvan. It's McAvan. Yes, because I spoke to her earlier. And I spent uh, a good bit of time down at her offices in Wathapon Dern, and I'll be bringing you that very shortly. Um, so, um, first of all, we're going to have this week's show as yours. Then we're going to go into the first part of my little interview with Linda McAvan. Uh, and then we'll have the ads, second part, back to me. That's about it. Yes, so here is this week's Show Is Yours. And now it's time for Show Is Yours, sponsored by Flavor Art UK.
show is yours. Sponsored by Flavor Art UK. Yes, that was this week's show is yours gallery with the new picks in there. Uh, and this week's winner is Alex McDonald, who sent a couple in a while ago now. And he's a man after my own heart because he likes a pint of the black stuff. So well done, Alex. I'll be in contact after the show and I will let you know how you get hold of your juice. And if you would like to win a bottle of juice, you know what to do. Send me an email, vaporscene at vapertrails.tv. Get it to me by a Tuesday and I'll get you into that week's video and that week's draw. You never know. You could win the same week. It might be a couple of weeks. You never know. But I keep looking and I just keep pulling them out at random. So there you go. Back to here. OK, we are going to go now into part one uh, of a two part interview uh, that I did earlier on with Mrs. Linda McAdden from Labour, who's an MEP in the European Parliament. And uh, we'll talk about the Tobacco Products Directive and a few other things. Enjoy. And I do hope you've got some strong juice with you. I'm just about to leave to go and interview Linda McAvan, MEP. She's the Labour MEP um, for Yorkshire and the Humber and specifically for my area. So uh, let's see what happens. So you are the rapporteur for the European Parliament on the TPD. Yeah. Uh, and You've been heavily involved mm -hmm. in that since what about seven months now? Yeah, since February. Yeah, yeah January, about, February. About seven months. Yeah. On on July the um, 10th, mm -hmm. there was quite a few amendments that, that went through. Um, can you just explain what the process yeah. has been for the TPD as you've been looking after it? Yeah, I mean, like any European law, um, they start their life as a proposal from the European Commission. So it's not me that drafts the law, it's drafted by the European Commission who put mm -hmm. their proposal on the table. But before it can become a law, every European law needs the agreement of MEPs, like me, mm -hmm. who are elected directly yep. to the European Parliament, and the ministers from each country. So the process in the European Parliament is only mm -hmm. one part of the lawmaking process. Mm -hmm. The second part of that lawmaking process is with the governments of Europe. So our health minister, for example, has been in meetings with her counterparts in Europe and they are also working on the same law. Right. And before it can become a law, we have to agree, MEPs and the ministers, the law together. If you think about in the House of Commons, well in the House of Parliament, you've got House of Commons, House of Laws, they've got to agree a law, it's a bit similar. Mm -hmm. There's no EU law until both ministers and MEPs have agreed it. And what we were doing on the 10th of July was having the very first vote in the European Parliament's Public Health Committee. Mm -hmm. But that's not even the end of it in the European Parliament yet. Because it's got to go before all the MEPs next. And after that, we've got to start negotiating with the governments of Europe. Mm -hmm. and then, eventually, we'll get a law. Just to say that, it's not, I think there's been a lot of confusion people writing to me as if that vote's the end of it. No, that's the beginning of a lawmaking process. Yeah. yeah, so the next stage is to go to plenary in September. Yeah. Yeah, and then that will then take it a stage further. And then we'll probably open talks with the governments and work on a joint text. And so together, once there's agreement, mm -hmm. then will be a joint, the law will hopefully take effect from, well, no, the law will be agreed before Christmas and will start taking effect different parts of it within two to three years afterwards because it's a law which is what we call a directive, a framework law, mm -hmm. and each country's then got to adapt it into its national law. So you get a European framework law and then each parliament's got to put it into its own national law. Uh -huh. So it's a kind of long, pretty long process before it becomes a law in this country. The, um, the MHRA uh, Jamie Mean has said, uh, under medicinal regulation, none of the e-cigs currently available, so nothing on mm. that table, um, would qualify for a marketing authorization. So that implies that medicinal regulation in Atlant would result in all e-cigs, all of those, 
and being taken off the market. Um, so nothing would be available to myself or fellow vapors. Mm. Um, how does that stack up? That's not my understanding of what the MHRA has actually said. Joan Means has actually said that. Well, yeah. my, well, that's not what the intention of our lawmaking is at all. My view on e-cigarettes is mm -hmm. that they really help people stop smoking. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of evidence. And I accept that evidence. I accept that if you're a heavy smoker, you're much better to get an e-cigarette, smoke it, and I would be happy to see heavy smokers switch to e-cigarettes. And I have no intention whatsoever of trying to get those products off the market. But what I want to do is make sure the products on the market are safe, they work, and they do what they say on the tin. And at the moment, we've got quite a lot of evidence that the products on the market are not really of good quality. And that's one of the, so we've been discussing not simply how to make sure they've got future free cigarettes, not the opposite. And I think there's been a lot of misunderstandings about that. Okay, so that being said, because I know, can I just quote you? Mm. Um, because on the 10th of July, uh, sorry, prior to the 10th of July, um, you didn't consider that e-cigs should come under medicinal regulations and it was not a good fit for them. Um, so can I ask which way you voted on compromise amendment 57, 58? No, I, I never said. I tried. I had a reservation mm -hmm. about medicine, full medicines regulation for e-cigarettes yes. because full medicines regulation requires clinical trials mm -hmm. and I didn't think we need clinical trials for e-cigarettes. So what we did instead was we drafted an amendment which has a simplified procedure mm -hmm. to authorise e-cigarettes on the market, which wouldn't require clinical trials. And that's what the amendment did. There were three amendments on the table, if you like. There was the amendments, and don't forget, my job there wasn't, my job as a rapporteur who's leading this legislation through the parliament is actually to find I mean, I have one vote, and the colleagues have a lot of other votes. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, in my political group, in a socialist group, there's different, like, Labour Party, and we, sit, we, sit, we vote with different people. In my group, the majority of members of my group, after looking at all the evidence, and we had a special hearing on e-cigarettes, and thought a lot about it, was that the best way to regulate e-cigarettes was, was as medicines. but we agreed to make a simplified procedure so that they won't have to go through the heavy medical legislation. So that's a, a, a sort of easier procedure to go through. And that's what was a compromise was, was agreed by the committee on that date. I had a fallback position, which I tabled with another colleague, which you would have voted for had the first one. You got to understand that, you know, you don't, I don't control all the votes and different people will mm -hmm. vote. I had a fallback position which said that it should be an authorisation, not call medicines legislation, but a sort of to make sure they were decent quality. And that, but the other one got more votes. That one was passed first, and that's and that's what happened. So what was voted through was a light touch medicines regulation of the kind that the UK government believes we should have in this country. Was that contained in Compromise Amendment Fifty Seven? Yeah, I think it was Fifty Seven. The number. So yeah. obviously you voted for 57. Yeah. Did you vote for 58? Or no, because 58? it fell. Because it fell because of 57. Yeah, because I'm saying to you, you put the, you know, you got to see which you're in a voting with different people from different political parties, and you have to see which ones get the most votes, and so that's how it works. So the other two, the majority of people, MEPs from across the different political parties, right across the political spectrum, voted for that first amendment. Okay. Um, just going back to the MHRA, because mm. you may or may not be aware, um, they've uh, informed current vendors that in order to continue trading, if this is enacted, the costs for each e product will carry an amount somewhere around £200,000 or more each. Uh, and one e vendor has currently spent over £2 million and is no closer to achieving an MA than they were before mm. they started. I've seen wildly different figures on the cost of getting a license to get an e-cigarette on the market. Wildly different ones from different, the companies exaggerate the amount, because let's not, the companies aren't charities, you know, they're, they're not, 
they're fighting the legislation because they don't want to have to pay to have their products regulated. But companies do that all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, banks didn't want to be regulated. Look what happened to banks. You know, sometimes you learn that things are better and they want to reduce their costs. I understand that. But a lot of e-cigarette companies are looking at making profit, huge profit margins in future. On the one hand, they're predicting that they're going to overtake cigarettes and they're going to become a big market. On the other hand, they're telling me that they can't afford to do a regulatory process. I think that if you're, a, that we need, if I was, some of the, some of the e-cigarette companies want a long-term framework and certainty. What they don't want is to have a lot of substandard products on the market so that all of a sudden something goes wrong and there's kind of, you know, it's like a big, oh my goodness, these products aren't safe, they don't work, etc. So some of them actually want a regulatory framework and they want some long-term certainty because they're looking at making long-term investments in this product which they believe has a future. So when you're looking at what kind of regulatory framework you're looking at, of course the companies, some of them want to minimise their costs. But we've got to look at the effects on the public as well, not just the effects on the company's profits. Vapacine is proudly sponsored by Health Evape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Iveber and Iveber Elixir, best in Yorkshire for your e-cig needs. That's iveber.co.uk and iveber-elixir.co.uk. Iveber and iveber-elixir.co.uk Pro sponsors of vapertrails.tv. The GG, because you want one. Now it's back to Vaporseam on Vaporchilles TV. Vaporseam is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Can I just show you this? that is from the Lancet. Um, this came out this morning mm -hmm. uh, and it's particularly the last paragraph um, before the, the references. Um, it's the, 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 the paragraph that says in conclusion. So in conclusion, since e-cigarettes are a recreational consumer product mm -hmm. that are competing with much more dangerous cigarettes which are not regulated as medicines, mandatory medicinal regulation is not required for public safety and can harm public health by restricting the ability of e-cigarettes to compete with cigarettes in the marketplace. Excessive regulation of e-cigarettes would protect the market monopoly of cigarettes and mm. have the potential consequences of disease in the death of millions of smokers who are prevented from moving on to the next generation of e-cigarettes. 
uh, for the first time in the history of the tobacco control movement, a realistic possibility is emerging that a tobacco problem might get resolved and that this could happen with minimal or no government involvement or expenditure. Regulators of medicine should hold their fire. Mm. What, what do you think about that? Well, I don't know who wrote the, I mean, The Lancet publishes different views and the medical profession has been divided to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And some, it's true, I've, you know, I've met some doctors who don't think, not from this country actually, I don't know who these doctors are, not from the UK. In the UK, I did take soundings from people who do believe, like action on smoking and health, they do believe we should have e-cigarettes on the market. Mm -hmm. But their top doctors say, because they, you know, they deal with people, they want them to be regulated as medicines. And so, yes, there are some doctors who don't think that, but they're equally in the UK, if you look at the, the bulk of the opinion I've had from the health community and from top doctors, it's certainly saying to me, we think to get the quality right, to make sure they do what they say on the tin, because if these, they did all the tests, some don't have ni enough nicotine in them. So if somebody was a heavy smoker, and started to use a product with not enough nicotine, they will think it didn't work and go back to smoking. So there's disadvantages in having substandard products on the market as well. Yeah. So we do need, I think, the question is how do you make sure, that's what we've been trying to get to the bottom of, that the products do what they say on the tin. And we mm -hmm. have, the products are mainly made abroad, they're, they're brought into Britain, they're mainly made in China, that's my understanding, and they're imported in. The, the, the actual li the liquids and things are not mainly manufactured here. I've heard there's one manufacturer going to open here, but they haven't opened yet. That's what I've been told. I believe a, most of the nicotine would be coming in from abroad. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of liquid is made here on site. So, for instance, this bottle yeah. was made for me mm. on site where it came from. Um, people like e Wizard, mm. people like Totally Wicked, mm. they've all got clean rooms um, where they make their mm. liquids. They're, they're cleaner than food preparation and some are even going as far as pharmaceutical. Mm. Well, they need to be clean, rooms. of course. They need to be Absolutely. up to standard. Absolutely. So, um, so but I don't know what they've got. I don't know why an e-cigarette manufacturer will be afraid of having a regulatory framework. Well, there's already a, a, a regulatory body um, called the CETA, that mm. you, you will be aware of. No, they're not a regulatory body, they represent the companies. Yes, but they also... They don't regulate. They, they regulate their members. They have audits, mm. they have to have specific yeah. things that have to be tipped off. But they're um, self-policing. They're self-policing, yes. Yeah. So, the, the, so the members of that association... They're not regulators. ...self-police themselves. Mm. Um, they have the child-proof mm. caps, they have the warning stickers, mm. they have the raised warning stickers. Yeah. Um, so they're chip compliant mm. bottles yeah. um, and obviously that even some of the bottles there, that one of my bottles is chip compliant in as much as it's got a childproof cap. Mm. Um, I don't have children yeah. but I do have animals yeah. so when I make my own liquid mm. uh, and I start with a, a, with a strength of 75 milligram and yeah. I mix that down yeah. to 24 milligrams for myself and for mm. my wife yeah. um, who has been mm -hmm. using e cigs almost as long as I have. Uh, and she was a pretty heavy smoker. Mm -hmm. um, I'm obviously, you know, everything has to be scrupulously clean, and that's just making it for myself. Yeah. Um, so the companies that, that supply us in the UK mm. um, are I extremely careful about what they do, and they have to test their their strength mm. of nicotine. And I've actually tested other people's nicotine mm. um, using a, a, a testing method, uh, and have not found yet. Mm. one that hasn't said what it is. Um, mm. Obviously there are going to be cases mm. where um, there's either too much nicotine or not enough nicotine yeah. in the liquid. The same as could be said about a medicine. Mm. Um, there's so many medicines coming onto the market. But that's why they're regulated. That are fake and they're getting into the chain. No, but they're medicine, they're illegal. And yes. medicines, and medicines which, I mean all medicines have to be approved to go on the market. Now obviously some medicines, you know, you know, if you're going to take a drug for a, an illness, you expect it to go through clinical trials. That's mm -hmm. what you would expect. But if you have something which is, they have a thing called a light touch medicines regime, which if you have a product that's like paracetamol, we all know what paracetamol does, we know what its effects are, so we don't have to clinically retrial it. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask, ask the, that this 
there'll be a regulatory framework by independent people. Because you can have self-regulation, banks have self-regulation, the meat industry has self-regulation. I mean, I'm just a bit, you know, yes it works, but to have total confidence in it. And don't forget, we're talking about a, a regulatory framework that's going to come in in three and a half years, if all goes according to plan. So the companies have time to adapt to this plan. And I know they're fighting it because they don't want any extra costs for themselves as businesses. But we're not here, me, I'm not there to defend the interests of e-cigarette companies. Um, I'm concerned that people who use e-cigarettes get a product that works and that's safe. And, um, and that's why we need a framework. Now, our question was what kind of framework? I looked for less heavy than medicines framework, but we don't have a body to do that in the UK. Somebody's got to regulate something. Who's going to do it? Well, currently the, the items themselves, mm. the, the devices, are, are, are regulated by trading standards. Yeah, but trading sta all trading standards do on any product. I mean, everything is regulated by trading standards. If this glass was, you know, sort of fell apart in my hand, then trading standards would intervene. They intervene when there's a problem. They don't actually, you know, it's just a... It, and you, do you know how many trading standards offices there are in, in Balvey, for example? Mm. There's a handful at the town hall, look after everything from cars to everything under the sun and they're not really equipped to do something like this. We wouldn't expect trading standards officers to be looking at paracetamol on the market or something like that. So they have a job to do but I don't think that's enough and I think even a lot of the e-cigarette companies have come to me and said that's not enough and they wanted some kind of framework and we've mm. been working to try and find the right kind of framework. Now we might disagree on what that framework should be but I think the fact that there should be a framework is pretty much recognised now. I don't think anyone is denying that there needs to be some sort of regulation. Yeah, yeah. I think what the, the, vapor, the vaping community, mm. uh, myself included, yeah. are concerned about is that we won't be able to get what we like to use. I think, and I've seen a lot of this, and I know people have written to me and are concerned, but there's nothing in what we're doing which should stop that happening. Because if you think about it, there might be some advantages as well for having them as medicines, the VAT rate would be lower. So you go down from 20% VAT to 5% VAT. But if you, if you, want, if you got, got it through a quick clinic, as some people do, they could be eligible to be available on prescription. So there will be, be swings and roundabouts to Will it. they not then be eligible to be prescribed to children as young as 12? No. No, because they are, by, only a doctor can write a prescription. And the products will be made available for whatever their license says they're available to. So the, so the license would say these products are available, you know, to, if you, if you wanted to buy them, on, if you wanted them on, it's only if you want them on prescription, as you can get at the moment, not smoking cessation products on prescription. I mean, I think everybody agrees that e-cigarettes should only be available to over 18 year olds. Absolutely. And that's everybody. I mean, I've not met anybody in the, in the and I know the vaping community are actually quite active on trying mm -hmm. to make sure they're not marketed to kids. And we have seen some irresponsible advertising, um, maybe not so much in Britain, in other countries, which are, you know, given out nightclubs and things if it's some sort of new, new gimmick. And we don't want people who don't smoke to become nicotine addicts using e-cigarettes no, and, and, and nobody wants that. No, so not at all. we do I think everybody recognises we need some sort of minimum age limits, restrictions on advertising, types of advertising, so that they are marketed at the right people. But yeah. I think that the problem with making it medicinal is that the very action of a medicine mm. is to um, yeah. the very action of a medicine is to treat a disease or treat a condition. Mm. Um, so you know by that what we're saying here is that uh, um, using nicotine is a disease. Mm. Well, I said it's a lot of time. I, I don't think that if you look at the we're in a lawmaking process. The governments of Europe also have to have their say on this law. Twenty-seven ministers met from twenty-seven different EU countries to look at the whole issue of regulation of e-cigarettes. And they've all agreed, the ministers, that it should be done as medicines already. They signed up to that in June. And if you know that, the ministers have already had their position very clear mm -hmm. on this product. So we've got 27 governments saying they should be done as e-cigarettes and saying that's the best way to do them. None of those governments are saying that the, this means that the products won't be on the market, that they're going to disappear, 
etc. And in fact, a lot of those governments are saying that they think they have a role to play in helping people quit smoking. And that's why they want to make sure that they stay on the market in a properly regulated manner. So I, do th I know there's lots of fears and I know there's lots of concern, but the MEPs and the governments are going to find some sort of agreement. The similar debate is happening in the United States at the moment where the, their, their FDA, they, they've got, they're going to have a special e-cigarettes law, that's, that's what they're working on at the moment, to have a regulatory framework in the United States as well. So these cigarette companies know this is coming and I think yes they're going to try, they're trying to sort of avoid it but I think that they know that there are procedures to get their, their goods authorised on the market and I think they will be on the market because if the market is as big as what they say, and I think it is, I think there is huge potential. They need to put some investment there. I mean, the profit margins some of them are looking at are huge. The profit margins for lots of things are, are yeah, huge. Yeah, but they are huge and therefore we expect them, therefore, to invest something in actually making sure the products are the right products. And when it was marginal use, I suppose people they didn't have the attention of the public authorities, but they are going to, as, as more and more people use them. And if doctors are expected to say to people, yeah, it's better than smoking, do that. They want, doctors aren't going to be advising people or quit, quit cessation to use it unless they're confident that it is safe for people to use. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, and that's what people want, that's the position people want to get to. That for people who do smoke, they are a good alternative to smoking, certainly. Okay, I know we're, going, we're very much yeah. nearly out of time, yeah. so can I just ask you one more question? Uh, and I'm going to quote you here mm. because on the 30th of May mm. at the Envy meeting, um, you said, "Let's be brave. Let's take the bold decisions that we need to take, mm -hmm. and we have taken as legislators in the past. And let's see the numbers of smokers reduce in the yeah. future." So my question is, do you or don't you think that e six can be a part of that future, and in what form? I think I've made it very clear that I think e-cigarettes are part of the future in getting people to quit smoking. I want to see them being part of that future. We are not trying to take them off the market, not trying to ban them at all. I think there's been some scaremongering from, from not from vapors themselves, but from others, trying to say that's what's going to happen. But we want to make sure the products are the right products and that they really do help people quit. So yes, I stand by that. And I want to see, I mean, people often think that we're heading Europe on things like um, smoking, but we've actually got more smokers in the US, where they've only got 19% of smokers now. Um, in Europe, we're 28%. We've got a real smoking problem. We've still got more people dying of smoking diseases than anywhere else in the world. So I want to see that come down. I think e-cigarettes can play a role for that, for people who smoke. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see a new generation of nicotine addicts recruited. No, there's no evidence of that happening in a big scale at the moment. But so we just, we just need to get the right kind of framework to help that happen and to make sure that people like you who've stopped smoking can get a product that works for you. So there you go. That was Linda McCavan talking to me uh, in her offices in Wathapon Dern, uh, which is near Barnsley. I'm going home now, uh, so it's back to the studio. There you go. Wow. That was a bit of a mammoth session uh, and uh, it was very hot and I left it pretty much unedited um, so you could see exactly and hear exactly what Mrs McCoven wanted to say uh, and I hope I asked the right questions for you. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I'm sure that uh, that little interview will be a point of discussion for uh, a few days um, and there are obviously some key points, uh, one of which was my view on e-cigarettes is mm -hmm. that they really help people stop smoking mm -hmm. and there's a lot of evidence and I accept that evidence. I accept that if you're a heavy smoker, you're much better to get an e-cigarette, smoke it and I would be happy to see heavy smokers switch to e-cigarettes and I have no intention whatsoever of trying to get those products off the market. So we'll keep an eye on that one, won't we? Yes, we'll keep an eye on that one because she does believe that uh, e-cigs do form a, a particularly good way of stopping heavy smoking. She doesn't want to ban them. So we'll see, won't we? We'll keep an eye on that one and we'll see what happens. Anyway, I know I, I'm a bit longer than usual. I didn't want to cut that video down too much. Um, so uh, I thought I'd leave it in its entirety. 
Um, so really, I am out of time. Um, it is DE Talk in around about nine minutes um, on this channel. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Dave Don on VT Talk. I'm not exactly sure what he's talking about. He may be touching on what Mrs. McAvan said tonight. Who knows? Um, I am actually going to see my MP on Friday, MP called Dan Jarvis, who, as you know, I've seen before. Hopefully this time he will uh, appear on camera. I'm still waiting for a decision on that, but I've definitely got a face-to-face -face on Friday afternoon. So I'm going to be discussing some of the points that uh, Linda made today uh, and some other things as well. One of which is, why can't I get a decent broadband speed at my house? Yes, because <laughs> if I did, it would be so much better. Anyway, I'll be speaking to Dan Jarvis on Friday uh, and I will hopefully bring you some information next Tuesday. I'm back to Scotland again tomorrow. Again, I was up there five days last week. I'm up there again tomorrow. So uh, I might do some stuff on the way home. Anyway, that was Vapor Scene for this week. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and I hope you enjoyed seeing Mrs McCavan squirm a little bit because uh, I think she did. Anyway, I will see you next week. Until then, my friends, tatty bye. Vapazine is proudly sponsored by Health Evape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. <laughs>